Look, I don't know about you, but when it comes to actually getting meals prepped every single week, I can never get it right. Our schedules are just so hectic. And with the holidays coming, and you've got family get-togethers, travel planning, and a host of other things, it's often we find ourselves in these moments grabbing the wrong foods. This is where Factor comes in clutch. Factor delivers delicious meals right to your doorstep that are ready to eat in just two minutes. And unlike the weather right now, Factor meals are fresh, never frozen, crafted by gourmet chefs to strike that perfect balance between flavor and convenience. And the best part about this is that you can customize your order exactly to your preference. Protein Plus, Keto, Vegetarian Options, Calorie Smart, Factor Fits Any Lifestyle. If you're interested, guys, use our link down below to head on over to Factor75.com and upon using code ASACROSS50, you will get 50% off on your first Factor box. Guys, I eat these meals literally every single week. They save so much on time, they taste fantastic, and they're extremely nutritious. Fellas, we gotta talk about a bill that a dear subscriber of ours shared with us. Big shout out to Lucrid for showing me why it's sometimes okay to put on the dress. Warlock mains? You probably already know about this. But for a Titan main like myself, sometimes I forget about this kind of synergy. This build has the potential to be a Grandmaster staple build next season. And considering next season is probably going to be seven months, that's going to be a hell of a long time. This build combination is going to be able to melt right through all champions next season, all because of a major buff to one of our exotic weapons. And after years of reading twams and patch notes, I'm going to say this is the biggest buff ever in Destiny history. And when you pair this with a Solar Warlock's ability to provide both defensive and offensive supports, and then add a free constant damage buff from our exotic armor, you've got a very strong build for endgame. And did I mention, it's also a fun build. Now, like I said, we're going to be using Solar Warlock, Bob on Dero Weller Radiance, or at least until we get our new super for Solar Warlocks in Final Shape. But for the time being, it's the best Solar Super we got, especially for Grandmasters and in-game content. As for abilities, we've got Phoenix Dive, which will cure you and nearby allies, and also apply restoration to you if Heat Rises is active when you use it. Healing Grenades for another ability to apply cure and restoration to you and your allies, which is really great for this build, as it's focused on providing constant support via our solar abilities while leaving the damage to our exotic weapon of choice. Now, you can use whatever melee you want. Personally, I have fallen back in love with the Incinerator Snap, but again, up to you. Now, for our aspects, we've got Heat Rises, which lets you fire weapons, melee, and throw grenades while gliding. You'll also be able to consume your grenade, gaining heat rises, that can then release a burst of healing energy that cures nearby allies. Now, also, the strength of the burst is increased when consuming a healing grenade. Then you've got final blows while airborne, which increase the duration of heat rises and grants you melee energy as well. All good things for the soaring through the air play style, which I know most people don't like, especially in PvE, but I promise you, it works well here. Now, depending on the content, though, you can switch around your aspects. Dry Acres Dash if you want, if you're not looking to be flying through the air and you're just looking to scoot. But you can always keep Heat Rises on and just not glide around and still maintain the ability to consume your grenade for heals and support. Let's talk Fragments. First, you'll want Ember of Tempering, which provides you and your allies increased recovery, stacking up to three times. When you get a Solar Weapon Final Blow, granting 30 recovery at three stacks. Now, while Ember of Tempering is active, you also get an increase to Airborne Effectiveness, as well as Fire Sprite from your solar weapon final blows. We're also using Ember of Torches so that your melee attacks make you and your allies radiant. Then we have Ember of Benevolence. This gives us a 400% increase in grenade, melee, and class ability regeneration for six seconds when you provide restoration, cure, or radiant to allies. This is where a huge amount of our ability regeneration comes from. 400% is no joke, especially when all of your abilities can provide one of these buffs. Then lastly, we have Ember of Empyrean, which will extend the duration of restoration and Radiance whenever you get a solar weapon or ability final blow. All right, and let's get to the meat of this build. Vex Mythoclass. This auto rifle linear fusion rifle hybrid is getting a massive buff in Season of the Wish. First, we're getting a 10% increase in damage versus red bar enemies. Then 25% increased damage versus bosses. But the big one is a 200% increase in damage versus champions while in the linear fusion rifle mode. Now that 200% is what we're really focusing on. We've done a deep dive into what the damage values are, but just so you know, for context purposes, 
it out damages pretty much everything. It out damages other heavy linears. Arbalus, Revision Zero Sniper Rifle, Quicksilver Storm Grenade Launcher. The damage that Vex meant the class against champions is going to be outputting next season is going to be crazy. And it gets even crazier with this build. And again, what Bungie's trying to do here with Vex meant the class is they're trying to give you enough damage to override worrying about stunning a champion. Essentially, just giving you overwhelming damage. And again, remember from our previous breakdown, yes, we showed 90,000 damage being done with Vex meant the class's linear form, but that was without any buffs. No radiance, no solar surge. That was just flat damage. And with this build, you'll have constant radiance and constant solar surge times too, totaling to a 42% increase in damage. Put this on top of that 200% buff, and Vex will be hitting around 38,000 damage to an unstunned champion and 128,000 damage to stunned champions. And because of how Vex works, you've got three of those linear shots. So it's not like a one and done thing here. Three, which is roughly 384,000 damage versus champions, at least in legend environments. Now, speaking of how Vex works, let's take a step back and go over exactly what this gun does and how it works if you're unfamiliar. Its intrinsic trait, Timeless Mythic Class, allows it to fire in full auto when it's in its default firing mode. The Temporal Unlimiter trait builds stacks of overcharge when you defeat targets. And when at max stacks, you can swap the firing mode, giving you access to Vex's linear fusion rifle form for three shots. Now, on top of this, if you have the Catalyst, which I recommend that you do, while firing in its default mode, Final Blows grant you a 20% bonus to damage, accuracy, and stability for five seconds. Now, something that we misspoke of here recently in our deep dive is that this applied to the linear fusion rifle form. Turns out it doesn't. This 20% damage only applies to the full auto mode of Vex. So apologies on that, guys. And we actually tested this as we technically swapped to the linear version form, even with that damage buff still procced on the left-hand side of your screen. But again, unfortunately, the linear shot does not benefit from that 20% buff. Now, expanding on the champion slaying focus for this build, if you equip a weapon with chill clip, something like Riptide, for example, you're set, guys. Radiance with Vex Mythic class to stun barrier champions, slow from chill clip to stun overload champions, and shatter from consistent chill clip hits, which will stun unstoppables. And by the way, everything is getting buffed here. So long as you have Vex linear shots ready to go, you can solo stun a champion and then switch to Vex to proceed to melt. Now let's move on to the exotic armor piece that's wrapping all of this together. This is what's giving us radiance pretty much non-stop, and that would be Rain of Fire. These boots come with the perk Soaring Fusilier, where final blows with fusion rifles and linear fusion rifles make us radiance. You can also get a moderate benefit to airborne effectiveness if you happen to be floating in the air. By the way, if you use Icarus Dash, air dodging reloads these weapons. Now, the main benefit here is radiance. It's a free non-stop 25% weapon damage boost inside of PvE, which we're actively using to buff up Vex. And what's so beautiful about this is the simplicity. Now, let's move on to the mods for this build. For our helmets, we have Harmonic Siphon for orb generation via Vex multi-kills. Now, it's from these orbs, which will provide that solar surge times two, which is slotted in our legs. Hands-on for bonus super energy on melee kills. The main takeaway is that this is just another way to provide radiance for your allies and getting that ability regeneration from Ember Benevolence. We also have Heavy Ammo Finder just to increase our drop rate of heavy. For our gloves, we have two impact induction mods for reduced grenade cooldown when causing damage with a melee attack. You'll be getting your grenade back relatively quickly without this if you're providing buffs to your allies for Ember of Tempering. But impact induction will help your grenade regeneration when you're gliding in the air as weapon kills while airborne provide melee energy. So again, it's a great feedback loop here. This also gives you more opportunities to rain down healing grenades on your allies. Then we also have Heavy Handed, which will make those melee final blows create orbs of power. For our chest, we just have resist mods. For our boots, we have two solar weapon surge mods and recuperation just to give us back some health. And for our class item, we have outreach, bomber, distribution, which all provide ability regeneration when you use your class ability. Now with all builds, but especially this one, prioritize resilience and then discipline. But onto the gameplay loop. Again, I can't stress how simple this really is. The buffs you're providing for your allies, whether it's cure and restoration via your touch of flame healing grenades and phoenix dive or radiant from your melee are all meant to feed right back into energy for those abilities. We're not using them for damage output, so there's no specific order or loop you need to use abilities in. You just use them to provide buffs and support for your fire team. Now, you do have the option to proc heat rises by consuming a healing grenade, but again, it's completely up to you whether or not you want to glide around, and this definitely changes depending on the content you're doing. Now, the weapon kills while airborne will extend heat rises and feed you melee energy. These melees give radiant to you and your allies if they're nearby, 
high, which will then give you a 400% ability regeneration from benevolence. But if you're up too high or nobody's around, you'll still be getting that grenade cooldown reduction from impact induction. Now you can use Phoenix Dive to dive back down to the ground if you get into a pinch while airborne. This will cure nearby allies and provide restoration. It also scorches enemies that you land near. Once again, if you don't land near allies to get the ability regeneration, outreach, bomber, distribution have you covered. Now we try to balance out the ability regeneration here so that if you happen to end up without the buff from Ember Benevolence, it doesn't feel insanely punishing. So you're not just waiting around for those abilities to regenerate. Then you've got Vex and the buffs it'll be getting in Season 23. Now the great thing about Vex is that it really requires no thought. Literally just shoot the gun, score some kills, then you get enough for overcharge, and then activate that linear fusion rifle mode. And again, every single kill is going to increase your damage, as well as a host of other benefits if you have the catalyst. And with every single kill, you're also getting the stacking bonuses of Radiant thanks to Reign of Fire. And whether it's a Vex kill or a melee kill, all of these will be netting you orbs, feeding into Solar Surge times two, and recuperation. Now, if you happen to be rocking Icarus Dash instead, again, this is automatically going to reload your fusion rifles and linear fusion rifles when you air dodge, which is exactly why the linear fusion rifle we're using is cataclysmic, which works perfectly. It's solar, you've got bait and switch, do damage with rip time, Vex Mythic class, swap over to cataclysmic when you need, and you'll be doing some hefty damage. And the way I'm going to be treating this build next season is that I'm going to use Vex Mythic class and rip time as my combinations to pretty much two down champions throughout the nightfall while occasionally cycling in cataclysmic, most notably when I'm against mini bosses. And then against the boss, I'll be going all out with cataclysmic. As again, that 200% buff that Vex Mythic class's linear fusion rifle form is getting is only against champions. So guys, that is that build. Warlock mains, you're going to be eating pretty good. This is a good one. I like this one. It mixes things up. I'm excited to see how it's going to synergize even in the final shape with our new solar super and probably other various aspects and fragments. This build, I believe, is only going to get better. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.